أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على سيدنا محمد سيد المرسلين خاتم النبيين وعلى آله وأصحابه أجمعين عباد الله أوصيكم وإياي بتقوى الله وطاعته وأحذركم وإياي عن عصيانه تعالى ومخالفة أمره يقول الله تعالى في كتابه الكريم من عمل صالحا فلنفسه ومن أساء فعليها وما ربك بظلم للعبيد We begin my dear brothers and sisters by entering into a state of worship a state of remembrance of Allah a response to Allah's call in Surah Al-Jum'ah where he says, O oh, you who have believed when the call is made for the salah, for the prayer on the day of Friday, the day of congregation. So strive to the remembrance of Allah. And therefore, brothers and sisters, we do so by stilling ourselves, by sitting quietly, and the, we do the analogy of sitting quietly not moving by not having our hearts and our minds move if possible by which i mean we still our thinking process we quieten down our emotions and empty ourselves from everything else and the only thing that you cannot empty yourself from is allah subhanahu wa ta'ala because allah has said in his quran wherever you turn wherever you direct your gaze there is the face of allah and in this state, brothers and sisters, we then bear witness that there is no God but Allah alone. Ashhadu an la ilaha illallah wahdahu la sharika lah. We bear witness that there is no God but Allah alone without partner. That Allah is the Almighty, the All Merciful, the All Compassionate, Creator of the heavens and the earth, and all that is between them. The light of the heavens and the earth, Nur Samawati Wal Ard. The one who created creation from nothing and will roll it back at the end of time, as he has declared and promised. And we complete this testimony, brothers and sisters, by bearing witness that our beloved Prophet Muhammad, peace and blessings be upon him, is his beloved servant and messenger whom Allah sent to show us, to teach us, to be the exemplar for us of how to follow in the path of Allah and the path of all of the prophets, the path which, which really is the collective path of all of the prophets, which Allah has taught through all of his prophets that he taught and sent as messengers to humankind all over the world. <clears throat> Today, brothers and sisters, I would like to continue the discussion that we began a couple of weeks ago on the importance of love. We did this because of the occasion of Valentine's Day, but love really is a constant theme in faith. And for the benefit of, of those, of, of all of you, and also we have some new participants who are joining us at Juma today, whom we welcome. I would like to, to repeat the highlights of what we said in the past two weeks. The key highlight that we pointed out was that your faith, your Iman, is measured by your love. Love of Allah and love of your fellow human beings. The Prophet said in the Hadith that none of you is a mu'min until you love for your brother what you love for yourself, which means that you that you do not that that you are that you celebrate and you are happy when your brothers or when your fellow human beings are healthy, are successful, uh, you know, are prosperous, are well. Uh, you do not feel feelings of jealousy, of rancor, of hatred. Now it is natural, as we have said, to uh, to desire what other people have that you may not have. That is okay. 
but not to begrudge them for that, to aspire to be like them, to wish and to pray that Allah give you the wealth of a of a um, of a Bill Gates or of a Jeff Bezos, um, to that give, to give you the beauty of some paradigm of beauty, to to give you the intelligence of an Einstein, to give you the wisdom of the prophets. All of that is good, but you never but 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 the perfection of faith is not to feel any trace of envy or jealousy because of the prophet or because of some saint has been given a great spirituality or this person has been given great beauty. So this is the measure of our faith that you love for others what you love for yourself. We also noted that this relationship holds true across all of the religions. Every faith teaches this principle called the golden rule, which is to love your brother as you love yourself uh, and has been phrased in other ways as that which you hate to happen to yourself, do not do to others, which is just an important part, not only to do the positive, but to eliminate the negative. We also quoted Jesus Christ said, Naisa, who when asked what the greatest commandment of Allah was, he answered by referring to what Allah had instructed, given to Musa in the Old Testament, which is to love the Lord your God with all of your heart, with all of your mind, with all of your soul and all of your strength. And when he was asked what the next commandment was, he said the second commandment shared first place with the first commandment, which was to love your neighbor as you love yourself, which means to love your fellow human being as you love yourself. Now, the reason why this commandment of loving, it's, it's, it's easier to say love Allah. We have no problem with that. The difficulty comes when to love your neighbor, to love your fellow human being. That's where we have our difficulties, brothers and sisters. I mean, I'm not, I'm not saying that loving Allah is not a challenge in itself, but no one will dispute the, the, the importance of loving Allah. And nobody, and we don't have as much difficulty in some ways we don't have the same feelings of the envy or jealousy that are not aroused when we when we say love Allah as when the commandment to love your neighbor, to love your fellow human being, to love your brother as you love yourself. Now, as I pointed out, I just said, the, the, the reason why it shares the number one position with the first commandment, the second of the first commandment, is understood when you look at it from a God-centric perspective. We have spoken about this many times in the past. The God-centric perspective means in which we look at things from Allah's point of view. Because we are created from the breath of Allah, Allah says we, he created Adam by blowing him from his own ruh, from his own spirit. Every human being, therefore, has a little bit of the, of the breath of Allah. And this is also a hadith and also mentioned in the Old Testament. Um, where where we say that Allah created Allah created Adam, uh, as the Prophet said, Adam ala surati. Allah created Adam in His own image. This image, brothers and sisters, is in the breath of Allah and in some of the key attributes that Allah has. Therefore, the commandment to love God also means to love God's image, uh, love all of God's images. So, since humanity it reflects God, therefore, the second commandment is equal because it's, it's, it's a continuation of loving God and loving God and his images. And when you love God and his images, you also love God's creation because Allah's creation displays God. It displays Allah's attributes. And therefore, the person who sees with the eyes of Allah sees Allah in creation. Now, we pointed out that the Prophet said in the hadith, you're not a believer until you love for your brother what you love for yourself. And as we just said, most people, and you don't have to be a rocket scientist, just look around, most people do not meet this standard. Which is why Allah confirms this fact and says most people are not mu'min, in fact. In Surah Yusuf, Surah number 12, verse 103, Allah asserts, and most people will not be mu'mins despite your best prof your best efforts, Allah tells it. In spite of your best efforts, Ya Rasulullah, 
most people will not be Muslim. Now this rareness, the rareness of being a Muslim or being a Muslim. You know, as Muslims are common, a dime a dozen, but a Muslim is a rare entity. And the rareness of being a Muslim or being a Muslim is also indicated by Allah in another surah, Surah Al-Waqah, Surah 56, where Allah separates between two categories, both of whom are saved, so to speak. Those whom he calls Ashab al-Yameen, the people of the right, and those whom he calls Al-Muqarrabun, those who are near to Allah, the in Allah's intimate ones. All right, so, and Allah describes what they get, but he also describes the people of the right numerically as Ashab al-Awaleen, وَثُلَّةُ مِنَ الْآخِرِينَ These are verses um, 39 and 40 of, of Surah number 56. Uh, this is uh, Surah Al-Waqi'ah, which means that the Ashab al are, are a portion of the people in the beginning of, of uh, and the beginning means the beginning of human era, with, and a, a portion of those in the end of time, of human time. Whereas the Muqarrabun, Allah describes, a portion of the people in the beginning and a little bit of those in the end. So it means, brothers and sisters, as time goes on, there will be many more Muslims and Mu'mins. And we see this, in fact, just by looking around us and seeing how many people are envious of others and you've all experienced jealousy and envy of others envy of others in your faith in your beauty in what allah has given you and this hasad is something this this hasad this and this 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 bad negative shaitanic envy um uh, uh you know i have experienced in my life continuously um and uh, and i'm sure many of you have as well where 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 so this is indicative uh, of how many movements there are or how many more or how many lesser number of movements there are than there are Muslims and you can also notice it in the fact that in our 1.8 billion strong international community of Muslims we have always emphasized Islam being Muslim establishing Islamic states establishing Islamic universities Islamic academies Islamic schools but you know, you never really hear, or not never, but very rarely do you hear an equal emphasis on Iman, on emphasizing the importance of being a Mu'min, emphasizing the teaching of Iman, of having a community of believers rather than Muslims. Now, since Islam is defined as the performance of our acts of worship, Islam is, as I've often said, a relatively easy thing to teach. But as we have pointed out, a man is defined as an act of love. Love of Allah, love of the, of the fellow human being, and love of the Prophet. I mean, look at this, brothers and sisters, how difficult what the, what the, what the, the entry point to being a mu'min is. As the Prophet said, none of us is a mu'min until we love for our brother what we love for ourselves. That's not an easy task for almost many people. And the perfection of your iman, you do, you do not reach perfection of iman until you love the Prophet more than you love yourself. So look at the, look at the entry point and look at the perfection of iman. We know of the difference between Iman and Islam because as we've said many times, of course, the verse in Surah Al-Hujurat, Surah number 49, verse 14, where Allah responds to the Bedouin Arabs who claim to the Prophet, is the time of the Prophet, uh, who, they, who, who claim that they have become Mu'mins. And Allah tells the Prophet to tell them, you have not yet become Mu'min, but you can say we have become Muslim. The 
the nomadic Arabs have said we have become mu'mins, tell them, no, we have not yet become mu'mins, but you can say aslamna, you can say we have surrendered, we have become Muslim, because a man has not yet entered into your hearts. So the point is, brothers and sisters, you, from this, is you can practice Islam and have no Iman. You can practice Islam and have no love. But you cannot be a mu'min and have no love. For love is the evidence of your Iman. It is the proof of your Iman. And, and the degree and quality of your Iman is measured by the degree and quality of your love. Now, let's look at love a little bit. Love happens when you feel attraction to your beloved and desire to be united with your beloved. And love achieves its perfection when your concern and care for your beloved's well-being takes precedence over yours. Its perfection occurs when you no longer feel that you're a separate self from your beloved but that you and your beloved are like one self. You move, you shift from two eyes to one we. This is what this famous story of Rumi, where he talks about a, a friend who goes and knocks on the door of, a, of the home of another friend. And uh, the voice says, who is it? He says, it's me or it's I. And the voice says, go away. So after many years, the, uh, the friend comes back and more, more, more uh, humbly knocks on the door of his friend. And the same voice says, who is there? He says, it is you, you whole heartbreaker. And the, the door opens and it says, welcome. You are, you are welcome. There's no room in this house for two eyes, for two egos, for two selves. And this is a, this is a, uh, an analogy to what happens when love is perfected, where you, where you feel and you care for your beloved's well-being, and that takes precedence over, over yours. In fact, when I, was, when I was preparing my khutbah, I was reminded of an old Egyptian love song, uh, which during my youth sung by the late Abdul Harim Hafiz, where he sings to his beloved that, that her heart and his heart have become one heart whose heartbeat is simultaneously felt by both him and his beloved, whose heart throb, whose heartbeat beats at the same time in, in, in both of them. And this, this aspiration or this poetic aspiration happens when the boundary of your ego more or less dissolves with the, with the, with the self of your beloved and you experience a shift from an I to a we. Now I've spoken of this uh, spiritual experience, brothers and sisters, that many of you and many of our predecessors have written about and described, those that the Quran calls Ahl al-Dhikr, the people of remembrance, also known as the Sufis in our tradition, which is why we have always recommended doing dhikr and we conduct dhikr sessions to both elicit and sustain your connection with God, your love for Allah, and your oneness with Allah. I also now at this point introduce another point, brothers and sisters. An, a, a point that usually uh, makes many Muslims somewhat taken aback when I mention it. And that Allah calls himself, among the attributes that Allah calls himself by in the Quran, is the attribute of al-mu'min, which means the believer. And al-muhaymin, al-muhaymin is a derivative uh, of the same root, Amina, which means the one who makes mu'mins, the ones who make believers. Now, the thing is that, if you notice, this, this name, or this attribute of Allah, these two attributes of Allah, al-mu'min and muhaymin, are mentioned only once in the Quran. And they are embedded in a bunch of, like, like, 12, a dozen other attributes mentioned all together. And because they're embedded, this attribute gets somewhat hidden because Allah has lumped them with a dozen other attributes. And therefore, when you read this passage, 
if you don't take notice of this of the of this point many muslims do not notice it even as we read the quran and muslims are usually surprised when i say well what do you think allah means by when by when he calls himself al-mu'min as i've mentioned in several khutbas before uh, of our earlier khutbas we tend to think of our faith as human actions we tend to think of shahada as a human action we tend to think of of salah as a human action um, but allah describes these as his own actions allah says shahid allahu annahu la ilaha illahu allah bears witness there is no god but he and and when you think about it obviously allah's shahada of himself is the fundamental and primary i mean allah is not imitating human beings rather allah himself who bears witness to himself has invited human beings to do what he himself has done which is to bear witness to himself and to his oneness allah says that he does salah upon us allah says that he does salah upon the prophet inna allah wa malaikatahu yusalluna ala an nabi allah and his angels do salah upon the prophet then he invites after that humanity ya alladhina amanu oh you have believed sallu alayhi wa sallimu taslima in other words allah basically invites this this image or this sequence of allah as the fundamental primary actor of a number of different actions inviting humanity to join him in performing an act that he himself does this theme we have talked about before but even the attribute of being a mu'min allah ascribes to himself you know this passage in the, in the end of uh, surah al-hashr surah number 59 where allah says uh, uh, you know huwa allah alladhi la ilaha illa hu so Allah, the knower of what is you know and who knows the seen the unseen rahman rahim the most of compassion three attributes there next verse Allah, the one okay i mean and then again it continues but if you count them you will count over a dozen different names exclusive of al mu'min al muhaimin but let's get back to our to our thread of our discussion allah therefore brothers and sisters is clearly the first believer as the first believer allah models what it means to be a mu'min to be a mu'min is therefore a key attribute of allah and since we measure iman by love and clearly Allah's love of himself is by definition the greatest love of all and since his love of himself is by definition the perfect love and as we said since love is the measure of iman Allah's perfect love of himself equates to Allah being the perfect mu'min this is Allah's self love but Allah's love is also expressed towards creation in fact Allah's love is is one manifestation of allah's rahmah allah's compassion or mercy and and this act of love that allah has towards towards creation has also been extended towards humankind we can even fact say that the fact that allah created man mankind in his own image that allah breathed into man of his own ruh that allah made man kind his khalifa on earth these are all some of the deepest possible expressions of love of allah's love towards humanity and a love that also expresses allah's faith his iman in humanity and since love is a movement towards unity between the love and the beloved it is also an expression of how allah has has um extended the boundaries of his self to embrace and include mankind within it by breathing into adam of his spirit now it therefore follows that if the perfection of our faith is to reciprocate and practice allah's actions 
and to reciprocate them. Therefore, it means that we express our love for Allah best. We express our Iman in Allah best by loving God. And we love God by reciprocating what Allah has done to us. And therefore, just as Allah has breathed from his ruh into us, Adam, we to breathe of our own spirit into Allah. This is the key aspect of dhikr, because in dhikr, you are mentioning Allah's name. You are actually breathing Allah's name. It also means giving up or surrendering our ruh, our spirits to Allah. It also means that we reciprocate what Allah has done to Adam and to humanity by making us his khalifas on earth, by surrendering our will to Allah's will. Therefore, in a sense, making Allah our representative, making Allah our khalifa, making Allah the active driving force in the expression of our will. This is what we mean. And what even the Christian says, may your will be done on earth as it is done in heaven. May it be done within us and through us. And, and this idea, the idea of this dynamic is expressed in the Quranic verse, Al Anfal, Surah number, uh, surah number 8, verse 17, where Allah tells the Prophet when, when he took a piece of clump of earth, the battle of Badr, and threw it at the unbelievers. Allah tells the Prophet later in the surah which came down after the, after the battle of Badr, it was not you who threw when you threw, but it was Allah who threw. Notice here the pattern of expanding, expanding the, 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 the the, the will of the prophet and the self of the prophet as, 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 as united with God and his own will. So when the prophet threw, it was Allah who threw. It is, is a joining of the self with the self of God, which is the very definition of love, brothers and sisters. This dynamic is also expressed in the Hadith Qudsi, which we have mentioned and many people mention all the time. That when, Allah, when Allah loves you, he becomes the sight by which you see, the hearing by which you hear, the hands by which you grasp, the legs by which you walk, and the hearts by which we understand. This, this experience described by this hadith and this verse of Surah Al-Anfal of, of the Prophet, uh, it was the God who threw when, he, when the Prophet threw, uh, is, is, is what Sufis have called fana fillah the dissolving of the self with the divine self. We have also said, brothers and sisters, it's this love which differentiates, the di which, which, which begins Iman, perfects your Iman, makes you a mu'min, and, and enriches your acts of worship. It is your love for Allah that you bring into your salah that makes your salah so much better in the eyes of God. So it is your experience of God, your love of God, your awe of God, your gratitude to God, all these feelings that are inside of you and how you, how you connect yourself to God that enrich your prayers, make them so much more precious and valuable in Allah's eyes. The Prophet said in the Hadith, whoever has seen me has seen Allah. It doesn't mean that God is, Allah is God, no, but if you've seen the prophet, because the prophet, all the prophets are like a window through which the light of Allah is, shines upon us more clearly. This also links to the prophet's nickname of Habibullah. We call our prophet Muhammad, peace and blessings be upon him, as Habibullah, being the beloved or the lover of God. And since we are commanded to follow the prophet's sunnah, brothers and sisters, we too should aspire to be Ahbabullah. We should too should be aspire should, should aspire to be lovers and beloveds of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Finally, brothers and sisters, last week we listed a number of Quranic verses where Allah describes the attributes of those whom He loves. Now these are verses, several of which are repeated or in different forms, but very variously they go along the following. In Allah Yuhibbu, or Allah Yuhibbu, Al or that comes next. For example, in Allah yuhibbul muhsineen, indeed Allah loves the, do the doers of good. 
if you look at these, make a list of these attributes, brothers and sisters, and try to be that. Allah yuhibbu al Allah loves the doers of good. In Allah yuhibbu al tawabina, we yuhibbu al mutatahirin. In Allah loves those who are repentant and loves those who purify themselves. Allah loves those who fear Him. فَإِنَّ اللَّهُ يُحِبُّ الْمُتَّقِينَ Allah those who fear Him. Allah يُحِبُّ الصَّابِرِينَ Allah those who Allah loves those who are patient, those who persevere. In Allah يُحِبُّ الْمُتَوَكِّلِينَ In Allah loves those who rely on Him. In Allah يُحِبُّ الْمُقْصِطِينَ In Allah Allah indeed indeed Allah loves the just. So be just. Uh, so if you look at these things, when you read these verses, brothers and sisters, don't just recite them as sounds. In internalize them. Be a doer of good. Be a person who purifies himself or herself. Be repentant. Fear God. Be patient. Persevere. Rely on God. Be just. And we also said that Allah mentions the opposite of that. Doesn't use the word hate. He said Allah does not love. The formula goes as follows: In um, Allah, la yuhibbul whatever it is. Indeed, Allah does not love. So, one here: In Allah, la yuhibbul mu'tadin. Allah does not love those who transgress, meaning transgress upon the rights of others. Allah, la yuhibbul fasad. Allah does not love corruption. And we pointed out in this context of verse 205 of Surah Al-Baqarah, it's the context of a person who corrupts the earth, destroys crops and destroys animals, destroys wealth. That means that Allah does not love those who destroy the climate, destroy wealth, destroy flora, destroy fauna. No. Therefore, we should protect it to get Allah's love. Wallahu la yuhibbu kullu kaffarin athim. Allah does not love every disbelieving sinner or ungrateful sinner. So do not be ungrateful to God. Be grateful. Be thankful to Allah. And be obedient to Allah. Allah Allah does not love the tyrannical, which is the exact opposite of Allah loving the just. So do not be tyrannical. Be kind. Be, be, be gentle to those over whom you have power. Allah does not love the person who is deluded and boastful, thinks too much of himself or herself. So don't be boastful. Don't, don't, don't overvalue yourselves. Don't, don't be so full of yourselves. Allah does not like that. In Allah, Allah does not love the one who is betraying, who, who, is, who betrays and who sins. Therefore, do not betray, be faithful, be loyal, and Allah will love you. Allah does not love loud language, foul, loud, foul language, except for the one who has been wronged, because Allah understands that. That means Allah loves those who Speak gently or soft spoken. The Prophet was indeed a soft spoken man. So, brothers and sisters, as we look through all these attributes, what do we see? We see a, we see a, a, a theory, we see a, a, a syllabus of action, a plan of action on how to become a beloved of Allah, how to be loved by Allah, and how to love Allah and to realize that love is the basis of Iman, of faith. So brothers and sisters, in this month, in this month of Valentine's Day, I ask you to also extend the love that you feel for the greatest personal love of your life, that the greatest love of all has to be your love for Allah and your love for the Prophet. And may, may you commit to walking on this path of loving Allah 
effort, we achieve the perfection of Iman. My dear brothers and sisters, pray to Allah that he may help us on this path, the path of those that he loves. Pray to Allah that he may answer our supplication. الحمد لله الحمد لله حمدا كثيرا كما أمر وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له المتعالي على المشاركة والمشاكلة لسائر البشر وأشهد أن سيدنا ونبينا محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم عبده ورسوله النبي المعتبر وعلموا أن الله تعالى صلى على النبي قديما فقال تعالى ولم يزل قائلا عليما فآمرا حكيما تنبيها لكم وتعليما وتشريفا لقدر نبيه وتعظيما إن الله ملائكته يصلون على النبي يا أيها الذين آمنوا صلوا عليه وسلموا تسليما اللهم صل على سيدنا محمد وعلى آل سيدنا محمد كما صليت على سيدنا إبراهيم وعلى آل سيدنا إبراهيم في العالمين إنك حمد مجيد ورضى الله عن الأربعة الخلفاء السارات الحنفاء المميزين بعده بالرعاية والولاية والاصطفاء ذو القدر العلي والفخر الجلي ساراتنا وموالينا وإمتنا أبي بكر الصديق وعمر وعثمان وعلي ورضى عن السبطان السعيدين السنين الشهيدين القمرين النورين سر شباب أهل الجنة في الجنة وريحان نبي هذه الأمة الإمام أبي محمد الحسن والإمام أبي عبد الله الحسين وعن أمهما فاطمة الزهراء وعن جدتهما خديجة الكبرى وعن عائشة أم المؤمنين وعن بقية أزواج رسول الله أجمعين وعن التابعين وتابع التابعين وتابعهم بإحسان إلى يوم الدين الله مغفر للمسلمين والمسلمات والمؤمنين والمؤمنات الأحياء منهم والأموات إنك سامع قريب مجيب الدعوة يا رب العالمين اللهم وأيد الإسلام وأعلي وانصر كلمة الحق والإيمان اللهم اجعل خير زماننا آخرة وخير أعمالنا خواتيمها وخير أيامنا يوم لقائك وارفع مقتك وغضبك عنا اللهم ارفع مقتك وغضبك عنا اللهم ارفع مقتك وغضبك عنا ولا تصلت علينا بذنوبنا أن لا يخافك ولا أرحمنا يا رب العالمين اللهم أصلح أحوالنا وبلغنا مما يرضيك آمالنا واختم بالصالحات أعمالنا وبالسعادة آجالنا فتوفنا وأنت رد عنا يا رب العالمين أسأل الله العظيم رب العرش الكريم أن يغفر لي ولكم والمسلمين أجمعين عباد الله إن الله يأمر بالعدل والإحسان وإنتاء إلى القربة وينهى عن الفحشاء والمنكر والبغي يعيذكم لعلكم تذكرون فاذكروا الله العظيم يذكركم وأقم الصلاة